So we are finally ready to start this little, very short, now five minutes short to talk about new <laughs> features in the Stray's. I'm Dmitry, I'm a maintainer of Stray's for quite some time, and today I'll give a short talk about new features, uh, just, uh, just a few of them, because, well, most of stuff we are doing is quite boring, and uh, nothing to talk about, but very important for these features and other new features to work. But if you're really curious, you can have a look at release notes and find out, dig out all the boring stuff is there. But today I'll stop, uh, I'll remind you about fault injection I was talking about last year, and I'll talk about new features. Uh, some of them are already included and uh, already released, uh, and some are still being merged. So uh, this is a recollection from the last year, uh, fault injection. If you just happen to miss this new feature, it's very unusual for traditional strays that you can uh, tamper with system calls, uh, like in this simple example, or where you, you actually can inject any kind of fault in any system call you specify, like in those invocations you want. And this is also from last year's talk. Uh, it's a real bug was found in Python that's it's already fixed now, but you can see that it just failed to check return code from OpenSys call and from Reese's call, and that resulted to sick faults because then just access and, and fixed offset from an null pointer. And another bug was fixed in dynamic linker in Glipsy. So pretty harmless bug, but still it was a bug. It was ignored um, setting protection uh, uh, some portion of memory expected to be inaccessible, but it failed to check this, and it remained accessible. This is not good, but it was fixed also. So this is just a quick recollection from the last year's talk. If you are more interested, you can just have a look at it uh, and play with it. It's a very useful feature. You can use it for like regression testing. Uh, we, we actually use it in the suite of a stress itself. So you're welcome. And we implemented more features in the, this direction. Uh, so there is a new option called inject that can inject not just false to syscalls, but other kinds of things like signals to syscall invocations, or other kinds of return codes that are not that useful. And also, delay injection. This is last. This is a, a quite new feature. It's not yet merged. So you can inject delays uh, in invocations on entrances call, on ex existences calls, and like if a trace wasn't slow enough, you can I make it even slower in specific cases, uh, as you can see in this example. Like how orders of magnitude is slow, one through, like three orders of magnitude slower, just those specific syscalls you want to. Uh, besides this, uh, silly examples where you can also, um, why is it silly? I actually been asked several times that people wanted to slow down some syscalls to throttle network traffic, for example, and those tools they that don't implement this, like slow down reads on, or sense or, or some other syscalls. Uh, another kind of use for this feature is, like in fault injection uh, case, is for regression testing, where you can specifically slow down some process that's expected to finish some, to complete some operation very fast. And if another process or thread is waiting for it for a fixed time, this will fail. So this way you can do that kind of inject some delays that affect control flow. Um, let's do this. Uh, my talk consists of small blocks, and if you have questions, uh, when you see this thing like 5 slash 5, it's the end of block, and you can ask them right now if you want. If not, let's move on to another block. So this year, uh, actually last two years, we've been a project uh, mm, 
it, it was a Google sum of code, JSOC project of two years uh, that implemented parser for mm, netlink traffic. Uh, the first year was uh, uh, ground, very groundwork, uh, uh, and last year we implemented the most popular netlink protocols, uh, starting with the route, and you can see like nine of them. And more are going to be implemented this year, I think, hopefully. Uh, how does it look? Well, this is a very simple routing table. To, to make this routing table, you, you have to um, create like a, a basic container with no network interfaces. Just a Lubeck interface. Uh, if you create this, you'll have just four uh, kernel, um, kernel routes. Uh, so how does it actually look what IP tool sees from the kernel? Let's, this is going to be a very impressive picture. Be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going under the hood. You see, this is a very structured output. I, I did some coloring. It's manual, sorry. Uh, I did it by hand. So, but you can see that, I mean, uh, the tool, uh, it doesn't see any colors. It's his structures. <laughs> Sorry. You should have shown the old output first, the binary. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, from S trace without the disassembly. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's, j it's just very simple. You will see it's calls, but without all these structures, it will be just string or pointer, depending on what kind of. As you, as you know, with sent to it would be uh, instead of this, instead of this structure that starts here, yeah. With curly brackets, you would, you would see. Oh, oops, sorry. You would see just uh, in all the traces. You would see just uh, a string, a, a binary string that means nothing. But here you see like a structured output almost. Uh, no, this is a, a knitting crowd, but are also supported. You can see on this nine of them. So it's almost like a netlink debugger. Without uh, probably, we can't really inject all this stuff inside the program, but you can see all these gory details. So then let's go on. Uh, another set of features we implemented uh, is related to Cisco specifications. Uh, as traces, as you probably know, have a lot of filtering, like it can filter sys calls by classes. This time we decided to add some more classes, but to avoid collisions with system calls, we added prefix. So all new system call classes are started with prefix it's a percent sign, and all, all traditional system, system call classes are also have this prefix. So these are traditional, and we also did like for different start family sys calls. Uh, you can see in this example how it looks like. What does it mean two percents? Just the, the way to describe all start process family syscalls. Why so so many? Uh, how do how many f start system calls do we have in Linux kernel? Do you think? Four, six, five. <laughs> uh, why five? Well. Uh, 64-bit architectures usually have two of them. 32-bits uh, also two, but different. And there's also an engine system call that modern architectures don't have. But you don't have to worry about all these details. Just use the system call class name. That's all, as you can see in this example. Uh, on, the 20, on, the, on the 27th year of the project, we decided uh, we found out that we don't still have support for regular expressions. <laughs> How could that be? <laughs> so we did this, and you can see that the same example from the previous slide could be could be like using. You can do the same thing using regular expressions. Um, I I don't think it looks easier to use, but. You, with regular expressions, you can do all different things. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the time is going back. <laughs> uh, another 
feature of system, system code specifications uh, is conditional expressions. Uh, as you probably know, um, system calls are added like every or almost every new <coughs> Linux kernel release, and they are not added to all architectures at the same time. It's not normally the case. For example, the recent uh, from the stat family called statx, it was added for many architectures, but not for all. And if, for example, you you write a somewhat portable script using a trace, it will get into the situation that it works in most cases, but doesn't work on uh, ammonish architectures like Itanium, where statics up to this point is not yet right up. So to using this conditional specification, you can work around this. And this is a real case example. Um, you will probably see this or will see in the future that GNU-libc switched from open to open ed internally and also to, for implementing open library call. So if you used to trace by open, it no longer works starting with, with GNU-libc 2.26. Uh, but if you switch to open ed, you won't be able to trace all the glibcs. It's not good. So you can use the list, but it's not portable because open is not available on some architectures. So how can write a portable trace script? You can use a regular expression or you can use a condition. So there are two examples. Which one is easier to read, do you think? A regular expression or condition? I think condition. That's why we added condition, despite that with the regular expressions you can describe the same thing, but it usually looks more complex. Yes? I don't understand the condition. So, what it's it, it says that this is call specification doesn't happen to match any real system call. So you can write full bar, and it will trace will not trace any full bar because there is no full bar syscall. And otherwise, your regular expression would be invalid. Yeah, if you just type a syscall or regular expression that doesn't match any syscall, a trace will not run. It will issue an error, as you can see. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry. Why not make it a default? Why not make a condition a default? Why not make a condition the default behavior was the question. Uh, first of all, you won't detect any accidental errors. People do errors uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be a change of behavior. And for the project of 26 or 27 year old, it's not a good idea actually to change uh, behavior in a backward imp incompatible way for not a not, not really good reason. Okay, the last topic uh, is advanced syscall filtering syntax. Um, this was implemented uh, also as a part of Google Summer of Code project last year, and it allows even more flexible specification of syscalls. Uh, for example, uh, you can trace by file description number um, without well, with traditional syntax, you can just either trace by specification, as you can see, or could see before, or you can dump by file description number. Now you can combine all these things. You can combine actions. Default is, tra is trace. You, you don't have to specify it. It's written here, trace, but you can omit it, as you can see on following slides. You can also combine um, different kind of things, like you can as you can see in this example, you can trace read syscall and dump only those syscalls that access a specific file. This way you will see that in slightly artificial example, you can see that uh, some program accesses different things, but we dump only those of them that are actually interesting. Why dumping the zero could be interesting, I think. Well, I've seen once it was not a device, but a file. 
in real life, it was not a good idea to replace a, a div0 with a file. I think somebody just with a um, super user privileges redirected output there and <coughs> some all s did something like this stupid thing and well uh, you can use logical expressions like and not brackets and uh, this way you can do very flexible filtering uh, as you can see you can select only those syscalls that work with files but doesn't take descriptors as arguments or and doesn't return descriptors as return as their return value uh, or you can well, all kinds of combinations logical expressions as you can see in these examples in the first example you don't see anything uh, just uh, as you could expect cut works with the file, it opens it, it does something with it, but you don't see all these syscalls on the those that are specified. Uh, this is another example of that kind of combination you can use, uh, like before this you, you couldn't specify what kind of uh, syscalls you want to stack trace. So all syscalls in traditional syntax, all syscalls selected for tracing would be sectorized if you request it. Now you can select which of those syscalls that are traced are actually sectorized. So you can see uh, this program accesses description number one, but we're interesting. We're interested only in those close syscalls to have a look where it goes from. As you can see, uh, it's, it's from exit hunter. So what CAD probably does, it installs an exit handler that closes uh, standard output. And it's actually what's happening, as you can see in this example. So that's most, more or less all. Uh, this, who is this, do you think? This is a mascot. A trace up to last year, had no musket. <laughs> so, we're very happy that we have one. <laughs> Meet our new musket. <laughs> if you have any questions. <laughs> yes, please. Should you prefer to uh, filter out uh, things in S-Trace instead of using external tools such as... Oh, so the question was why one might want to filter something in S-Trace rather than um, parse a S-Trace output, right? Uh, well, tracing makes things slow. If you don't need something, then you don't trace it. You don't parse all this uh, imagine how many sysholes you you have to issue to fetch all this memory from Tracy. If you don't need this, you just don't. Uh, that's why. Yes, please. Yes. It's not really net link tracing. It's it's advanced parsing of the traffic that goes, because by default, if it's treated as a string, it means nothing or almost nothing. It's a parsing. It's not additional tracing capability. It's additional parsing of of things. So the syscalls are the same. Or it could be any kind of syscall, it could be just read, right? Yes, please. Do you already have this parsing or maybe blend this parsing, for example, for DNS requests and other things, which are sometimes very helpful to understand 
Uh, we don't have partial for DNS protocols, uh, and I'm not sure because it's not uh, uh, something you can distinguish from a socket. For example, when the socket is a netting socket, you can find it out. Distinguish by port, so I can, at least I could filter by port and say make that trace filter whatever. Um, it would be a nice feature. But now I see that it's really impressive, and having some more binary blobs getting it more purpose would be a great thing. So it probably would make sense to implement some kind of plugin system to so one would so one would just implement a repository for this chunk of memory. A stage would fetch it and give to a plugin to which port with destination whatever reduce which field and things like that. Sorry? And then have a set of uh, rules from Tracing something uh, that port, that destination, that system called something, use this plugin for analyzing code. Yep, for and example. UDP data, it's easy. Usually replacing something what uh, Wireshark already does. Yeah. So I can imagine just outputting the. Yeah, but it's on a different uh, level. It's sometimes it's difficult with Wireshark. It's not really a Wireshark, it's a trace. It's S-trace. Yeah. <laughs> there are good so reasons sometimes using <laughs> S-trace for a complex problem, and you only want to see what's going on in the network before your mate, for example, does your things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's not about the, network the in the first binary blobs from yeah. S-trace and then put it as an input to the Wireshark, which already, which already has this... Like yes, this system. also could make sense, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you will yeah, thank you. the effort in the S-trace. I agree, and the wheel just make an interface to export yeah, cap files. Yeah. <laughs> just really? the, but I want to have the feature in S-trace finally, just uh, get this wonderful output for... Oh, you're asking for DNS host, but um, resolve it, something like that. Yeah, this makes sense. Not to replicate all this work, oh. making Wireshark and TCP dump and what, whatever else. Yeah. Any more questions? What's the mascot's name? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we can choose something What's for a name. <laughs> yes, I think it's it's Strauss. Yes. He's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Any more questions? No? Then thank you.